All right, so it's finally time for us to install Netboot XYZ on our Proxmox environment and get Network Boot working. So let's begin. Now, Pixie Boot is something that I always wanted in my environment, but I always had trouble installing it up until I saw this video from TechnoTim for Netboot XYZ, which makes Pixie Boot extremely easy to use. Now, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to his video. He has a more detailed description on setting it up mostly through the internet. But in my case, I'm going to be changing the install slightly to more of a local install. Now, he does cover it a little bit as well, but my primary use of this is to store everything locally. So if you guys want more information about this, you can can actually go to their website called Netboot XYZ and they have documentations, downloads, stuff like that for you to go through. We will be going through the website during the install a little bit later, but first I'm going to show you a demo process. Now I am booting into a machine, a test machine with the Netboot XYZ as a container um, into this environment. So as you can see, once you first boot in, this is the menu that you get. And you can boot into live CDs, you can boot into utilities, you can boot into Windows. There's a lot of things you could do with this. But mainly, let's check out live CDs. Now, I do have a few uh, images that I have pre-downloaded. So not all of these work, but some of them that I do have downloaded does work. So like Debian, um, Debian Live 12, and I have Cinnamon. And you can see it instantly downloads it and transfers it right over to this machine and it boots up. So right here is downloading. It's downloading through the network and then give it a few more seconds and it's going to instantly boot up. Now I have slow internet. So if you don't do this locally and you want to grab this off the internet every time, it will be quite a wait. That's why I prefer running this locally instead. All right. So here we have Debian uh, booted up using Netboot XYZ. And again, this whole image is coming off the network. So it's pretty quick after you transfer it over, but you do need a decent amount of RAM to store the image in itself. Like Debian only needs about two gigs of RAM and it'll boot up, but other operating system needs like four or some might even need more depending on what operating system you're trying to load. So right now I know that Debian does work. I'm going to restart it and go right back into Pixie Boot. And you can see this is the boot up, the BIOS. Pixie Boot is getting uh, picked up. And you can see right here, Net Boot XYZ. And this is the version. This is the latest version right now. All in all, it's really cool. But a lot of the work is actually done through my OpenWRT to route the traffic to know that it is actually running on my network. All right, let's try another live CD. So I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna try say elementary OS. And same thing, I got seven downloaded and it's gonna load right up. Over here, it's gonna start pretending to download right off my TFTP. And there we have it, elementary OS, the install at least. And if I want to get into the live CD portion of elementary OS, I just have to go through these options real quick. And I could do try demo mode. And I could be in the live uh, demo of uh, elementary OS 7. So yeah, it's really easy to use, especially if you need to install multiple operating systems or someone like me who tests a lot of operating systems or installs a lot of operating systems on devices. This actually helps a lot instead of having to carry a USB all the time. So now let's check out some other thing, not live CD related. So we're gonna go right back into booting uh, into a Pixie boot. Um, and here we go again. So say we have utilities. There's a bunch of utilities that you could use like Clonezilla, D-Band, RescueZilla, Ultimate Boot CD. So say like I have Clonezilla downloaded. I could just go over here. I have the Debian base. I could go into stable and this will boot right into Clonezilla Debian version. So if I needed some utilities to back up or image storage devices, I could do that right through here using my Pixie Boot without having to carry my USB. Ultimately, this is a very fascinating tool and it works very well, especially if you have a newer system that supports this. But if you don't, they actually have an ISO image that you could download that will actually emulate this uh, Pixie Boot. So you could still be able to boot over your network using their ISO. Now I'm going to reboot this. And one last test we're going to try is booting into Windows. All right, so Windows is a little bit different to set up. It's not just like downloading the squash image and be able to boot from it. You do have to transfer the contents from an ISO to a directory. But I did manage to figure that out and I do have to load in the base URL. So in my case, it's 10.50.50.241. 
slash Windows 11. And in there, it's gonna know I have subdirectories of Windows 11, X64, and I have the boot managers in these folders and these locations. And then now I could load the installer. And there we have it. Windows 11 will load up as a boot installer through Pixie Boot. Now jumping into the configuration page, which is port 3000, uh, you'll be able to see that what I have over here, this is the main page that you'll see how much disk you have. I don't follow this information because um, since I'm running this off of LXC, this information is inaccurate. Like I only gave it half a gig of RAM, but it's showing that I had 33 gigs of RAM. But I'm here mainly to show you the local assets. So here I have Clonezilla, Debian, Debian, Elementary OS, Zorin. Say I wanted to run Arch Linux. All I have to do is just click on these three, the squash image, the VM Linux, the in init RAM file system right over here. And I just have to do pull select it. It's gonna download these three images and now I will have it locally so I could boot it up next time I go. But if I don't have something say like uh, Clonezilla or Debian 10, and I don't have it downloaded locally, it will not boot up. It'll just say file not found. And that's how you would get all the assets locally. Now, some of these are pretty large in file, like LM Julius, I think was like three gigs or something. So you do have to pay attention how much, RAM, how much storage you're gonna give to your VM. But I do have Windows here. You could see I actually manually transferred all these over to a folder called Windows 11 from my ISO. And it has all the files on a folder called x86-64. Now you can tell I don't really have fast internet, so it's taking a while to transfer. That's why I'd rather run everything locally. It just makes a lot more sense than to have to pull the image off the internet every time I want to boot up. Now, if I go over to menus, this is all the stuff that you can boot up. Here's the downside to using Netboot XYZ is that it doesn't support every image that's out there. So I'm currently playing around with an operating system called Coolfish and it's not on this list, which means I won't be able to download it or boot from this media unless I make my own little pixie boot that works off Cutefish OS. Same goes for other operating systems like Linux. I don't have, let me reset this right over here and let that boot into pixie boot. But yeah, I don't have the latest version of Ubuntu like 24.04. So if I'm testing operating system that's not on this list, I will still need to use my event toy option and boot from USB. If you are familiar with setting this up or know how to do this, you can probably copy and paste and make your own little pixie boot for your little operating system that is not on the list itself. So yeah, going back to the list, as I was saying, if I go to live CDs and if I go over to say Ubuntu, 24 is not here, so I won't be able to test 24 through this install method. And that's the downside. It's like if I'm trying to play with something that is the latest and greatest that is not on this list, it's not gonna be available unless I either make one or I wait until this gets updated. So let's jump into the installation part. All right, so here we are on my Proxmox, and yes, I'm not in dark mode because my theme is not in dark mode, so you see everything white. Uh, but all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a CT or container, and we're just gonna do 20, Actually, 10 and 100 is fine. I'm going to call this netboot xyz. And we're going to create a password for this because it's actually going to be a regular image. Go through here and we are going to run this on a Debian 12. It doesn't matter. You can choose whatever you want. Really, as long as you can install Docker, um, either one works. So I'm going to hit next, disk space. This one you want to be as much as you want to store the images. So if you're going to store a lot of images, you might want more storage. So 64 gigs, 32, whichever you want. But that, this size should reflect how much images you want to store. CPU, I'm just keeping at one. Memory 512. Network, I'm going to keep this at DHCP. But I am going to be under my OpenWRT. So I'm going to be using VBR1. In your case, uh, you don't have to change this. It really depends where your router is at. So I'm going to test this on my OpenWRT router over here. Hit next, DNS is fine, confirm, and this is going to create itself. All right, once this is done, we could jump into there and start configuring this box. So I'm going to start this box, go to console, root, and make sure it grabbed an IP. Yep, there you go, 242. And I am going to do apt update and app upgrade just to get the latest packages. Okay, now next, what we need to do is actually install Docker. So we're gonna do apt install docker.io and we're gonna grab that. Let me clear the screen or control L if you want. 
Um, next, we have to follow the instructions of what Netboot XYZ has for the Docker installation. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out, split this in to the right, split this to the right, split that to the left, I mean, and start going through the setup. And so let me see if I could like move this over. Um, I'm gonna go over to documents and on the documents, they actually have something called Docker container. And basically what I just need is this little stuff because we are gonna be using some arguments over here or variables. And in my case, I'm gonna do PWD just to see what directory I'm in. So I'm in root, which is fine. I'm gonna do docker run dash D and I'm gonna name this net boot XYZ. And what we mainly need are the ports. So 3000. All right, then we have port uh, 69 UDP and then port 8080 to 80. And then we do need to set one variable or volume path, which is to root. And we're going to call this net boot just so we can store all our assets. And we are going to do this slash assets to slash assets. Also, we are gonna run the same thing they are running, which is restart unless stopped. And we are actually gonna be using it from a Docker hub. So we're just gonna use net boot XYZ slash net boot XYZ. And there we go. It's gonna pull the image and basically run it as soon as it starts. Now we can check this out. So we could go to Docker PS see that it's running and we can go to docker logs and we name this net boot xyz so we could just see if it started and there's no issues over here so it did start so we know it's running so for me i actually have to go to openwrt and forward the port so i can see port for 3000 so i'm going to go into 192.168 to my router over here and forward that port that i need port 3000 to 242 right here netboot xyz save save and apply and now if i was to head over to that same port and go to port 3000 i should be able to see this menu now and it shows that i have my disk buffer local assets i have nothing here because i didn't download anything but i have all my stuff that's in here now we're not done here now we have to configure the boot config now in boot config right over here we do have to edit this one line now this line actually tells that the location of the live assets. So right now, anytime you run a live CD or anything, it will actually just pull from GitHub, which means you have to download the image every time. So what I'm gonna do right here is just take this, I'm gonna copy this and then paste the new line underneath. And then I'm gonna comment out the line on top, just so I have it as a reference. And then in this, I'm gonna change this. So it's gonna be HTTP because I don't have um, HTTPS enabled on my home network on for that. I'm gonna to go to 10.50.50.242. And since the TFTP port is on 8080, that's what we need to set it. And you don't need the trailing slash. We're gonna save this config. So now it knows it's gonna pull the live endpoints from this area. So all we need to do next is just start downloading what we need. So say like if I wanted to download Let's do something small like Arch Linux. I would just go over here, download Arch Linux, pull select it. I'm gonna let this happen while I do my thing. Now, the next thing I need to do is a big one. It's actually where I ran into a lot of the difficulties when I was setting this up in the past. Not Netboot itself, but mainly just Pixie Boot, where we would actually have to go into the router and set up the DNS. I am using Linux Server IO as a reference. I'll leave this link down in the description below but he does have different configurations for different routers. So this one is for OpenWRT, or if you have something that is with OpenSense or PFSense, it does have instructions here on how to do it. Since I am running OpenWRT, I am gonna be using this method, so I'll just copy this. And I am gonna to go to Kate, which is a text editor, paste this in here, and anything with your server IP, that's where you have to change to your server IP, basically. I'm gonna go here and replace this and replace this with 10.50.50.242. Replace all, and there we have it. 
So now I could copy this text again and then paste it into my OpenWRT. Now in OpenWRT itself, there is an area that I couldn't figure out how to get this to work. But if you go over to DHCP DNS, there is Pixie Boot TFTP settings. And supposedly I think you could add the stuff down here manually. I couldn't get this to work. I couldn't figure it out. So instead I just added it to my DNS masquerade file. So what I ended up doing was going into OpenWRT, manually going into the console. So if you could SSH into your OpenWRT, you could just VI into ETC, DNS masquerade, that config, head all the way to the bottom and just add this, what we just edited before, into the bottom of this. I'm just gonna paste this and there we have it. I'm gonna hit escape, colon, WQ to write and quit and reboot this router. And it's gonna take an effect with the new uh, DNS stuff. With that all being done and this being done downloaded, I should now be able to boot into netboot XYZ. So I'm gonna create a new image right here. So I'm gonna to go to mini PVE, create VM, and I am just gonna call this test machine. Next, the OS, I'm not gonna have anything, so do not use any media. Hit next, system, I'll leave this as standard. Disk, I'll leave this as standard as well because I'm not really using anything here. CPU, I'll do two cores. Memory is where I want to give it like six gigs of RAM, so 6144. And network, I am gonna use this as VMBR1 because I want it to be on the same network as my OpenWRT. And then confirm everything and I'm gonna let that build. So at this point we do have Arch Linux installed and I should be able to boot into this because this is locally installed. Let me go into my test machine. I'm gonna start this up and it should be able to go right into my Pixie boot because my OpenWRT should be able to pick this up and direct it to my NetBoot XYZ. And there we have it. All right, from here on, like I said, the only local thing I have is Arch Linux, which doesn't even show up here. Might be Live Linux Network. Yeah, there you go. Arch Linux. And I don't think I have this file. See, if you don't have the file, that's what shows up because the version that I have is 23 and it's Arch32. So I might need to download something that is a little bit smaller. But you know what, in my case right now, what I'm gonna do is test DBAN because it's a quick download. So I'm gonna download DBAN, go to pull select it. That's like two seconds to download. Go back into here. I'm gonna go back into the main menu, head over to utilities, and I'm gonna go to DBAN and proceed. I know what I'm doing. And there you go, DBAN is here, wipe all disk whatever it is, and it's gonna end up booting into D-band, and that's it. Ultimately, setting this up is pretty easy. It doesn't cover everything that I would like to do, like running Ubuntu 24, but it does help with not having to carry all the operating systems that I wanna run, especially like if I want to run some diagnostics like Clonezilla or Ultimate Boot CD without having to carry the Ventor USB around. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And thanks for watching.